Coming up. And the State Department tonight engaging in a time-honored practice, releasing politically sensitive documents on a Friday before a holiday weekend. Today's release, emails with classified material belonging to none other than Hillary Clinton aide Uma Abedin. We'll take all of that up here tonight. We begin with our top story, President Trump warning Democrats he will not concede on amnesty for illegal immigrants. The president taking to Twitter to lay out his immigration demands, which include a border wall and end to chain migration. Fox News correspondent Rich Edson is with the president in West Palm Beach, Florida, and has this report. President Trump says he'll deal with Democrats, though he has conditions. He tweeted, quote, the Democrats have been told and fully understand that there can be no DACA without the desperately needed wall at the southern border and an end to the horrible chain migration and ridiculous lottery system of immigration, etc. We must protect our country at all cost. I'm here today to announce that the program known as DACA that was effectuated under the Obama administration is being rescinded. Through executive action, President Obama created DACA to protect from deportation those brought to the country illegally as children. The Trump administration says it is ending those protections, arguing it's Congress's role to set immigration policy. I have a love for these people, and hopefully now Congress will be able to help them and do it properly. A senior administration official says the Democratic and Republican congressional leaders will meet Wednesday with White House Legislative Director Mark Short and Office of Management and Budget Head Mick Mulvaney to discuss immigration, government spending, and other issues. And in a 30-minute interview with the New York Times, the president said he wants Democrats and Republicans to work together on health care and a trillion-dollar infrastructure package. He also softened his approach to special counsel Robert Mueller, telling the Times, quote, let's just say I think that Bob Mueller will be fair and everybody knows that there was no collusion. The president says this investigation makes the country look bad and puts the United States to him if he thought the Department of Justice should reopen its investigation into Clinton's emails. The president said, quote, I have absolute right to do what I want to do with the Justice Department, but for purposes of hopefully thinking I'm going to be treated fairly, I've stayed uninvolved with this particular matter. He turned to international matters and a report that originated in South Korea alleging that China illegally supplied North Korea with energy. The president says he's been soft on China's trade policies because of its willingness to address North Korea. He says, quote, China on trade has ripped off this country more than any other element of the world in history has ripped off anything. But I can be different if they're helping us with North Korea. President Trump says he likes Chinese President Xi Jinping, that they have great chemistry and that they're friends. The president says the only thing more important than confronting China's trade policies is addressing North Korea and the potential for war. Greg? Rich Edson. Rich, thanks very much. An extraordinary document dump on a Friday before the New Year holiday. The State Department this afternoon releasing emails from Hillary Clinton top aide Uma Abedin. Emails found on Abedin's estranged husband's laptop. Fox News correspondent Ellison Barber is live in Washington, D.C. and has been sifting through these documents. Good evening, Ellison. What are you seeing there? Good evening to you. So the State Department released about 2,800 documents this afternoon. Many of them were heavily redacted, and oftentimes the same email appeared more than once. We are still going through all of these, but so far we found at least four which were later labeled classified. Uh, these emails are not from a government server. They're private emails seemingly forwarded from non-government servers to a personal laptop shared by Huma Abedin and her now estranged husband, Anthony Weiner. Weiner is currently serving time at a federal prison in Massachusetts. He pled guilty earlier this year to sending explicit photos and messages to a 15-year-old in one email. Email, which is dated November 25th, 2010, and in 2011 labeled classified until 2025. Someone sent then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton an email with advice on what to say in a call with Saudi Arabia's foreign minister and specifically how to address the release of documents in what later became known as Cablegate, where WikiLeaks published a number of sensitive diplomatic cables. The note suggested Clinton say, quote, I deeply regret the likely 
likely upcoming WikiLeaks disclosure. And quote, I seek your help in preventing WikiLeaks from undermining our mutual national interest. These documents were released because the conservative group Judicial Watch sued the State Department. In a statement, Judicial Watch uh, President Tom Fenton called the release a major victory and then went on to say, quote, that these government docs were on Anthony Weiner's laptop dramatically illustrates the need for the Justice Department to finally do a serious investigation of Hillary Clinton's and Huma Abedin's obvious violations of law. Fox News reached out to Abedin's lawyer. So far, we have not heard back at a hearing earlier this year. Then FBI Director James Comey said they had no indication that Abedin knew that what she was doing violated the law. And when they looked at this, Comey said they did not see any criminal intent. Greg? No criminal intent. Uh, how about gross negligence? Because that's the law, too. Ellison Barber, Ellison, thanks very much. You bet. President Trump is toughening his rhetoric on China after reports it illegally is supplying oil to North Korea. China denies the reports, but the president is signaling he will take a much harder line against China in the new year. Lucas Tomlinson is at the Pentagon with the latest. Please raise their hand. Defense Secretary Mattis predicts more actions against North Korea following the latest round of UN sanctions. I think you will see increased pressure. What form that pressure takes in terms of physical operations uh, is something that will be determined by the, uh, the cognizant government. South Korea says it seized a cargo ship last month, claiming the vessel was illegally transferring 600 tons of oil at sea, an action prohibited by a U.N. resolution passed in September. The Hong Kong-flagged vessel Lighthouse Windmore entered a South Korea port on October 11th to fill up with oil. But instead of heading south to Taiwan as scheduled, the ship rendezvoused with a North Korean ship a week later. The transfer captured by U.S. spy satellites and released by the U.S. Treasury Department last month. It was only yesterday President Trump reacted on Twitter, quote, caught red-handed, very disappointed that China is allowing oil to go into North Korea. There will never be a friendly solution to the North Korea problem if this continues to happen. But before blaming the Chinese, President Trump was praising them just last month while visiting Beijing. I thank President Xi for his recent efforts to restrict trade with North Korea. Together we have in our power to finally liberate this region and the world from this very serious nuclear menace. In terms of North Korea and getting everybody together, I think their acts are all together. Uh, China has been excellent. In a New York Times interview, President Trump says he's gone easy on China because the only thing more important to him than trade is war. The Chinese have been notorious for decades now for publicly agreeing to sanctions and then privately not enforcing them. So we're seeing yet another case of this again. China accounts for 90% of North Korea's trade, but Beijing denies any involvement with this ship despite being registered in Hong Kong and leased to a company in Taiwan. Russian smugglers are also being accused of supplying illegal oil to North Korea at sea. At the Pentagon, Lucas Tomlinson, Fox News. Lucas, thanks very much. We're coming right back with much more. Stay with us. President Trump says there will be no DACA deal if we do not end chain migration and build the border wall. We will very importantly uh, be funding and closing the loopholes that undermine our enforcement, and we will get rid of chain migration. And President Trump pressuring China to step up and do more to denuclearize North Korea. But China continues to carry out illegal business with the rogue regime. That story and much more coming up next. Welcome back to the national left-wing media, frequent target of President Trump, but the president now predicting he will win re-election in 2020, thanks in part to the media, saying, quote, Another reason that I'm going to win another four years is because newspapers, television, all forms of media will tank if I'm not there, because without me, their ratings are going down the tubes. 
So they basically have to let me win, and eventually, probably six months before the election, they'll be loving me. <laughs> Joining me now to talk about a Fox Business contributor, Rachel Campos Duffy, and columnist for The Hill, Joe Concha. All right, folks, what do you think, Rachel? Well, I think that's a really silly statement. <laughs> and I think he's completely underestimated how much they hate him. Um, you look at Hollywood, you look at the media, uh, they care more about their ideology than they care about ratings and making money. Just look at the movies that they produce um, out in, out in left-wing Hollywood. Right. So, no, I don't think that they're going to give him a pass in order to keep <laughs> their sales up. Um, but I do think that Donald Trump has done something very important um, in the last year and over the course of his campaign before that, which is he has exposed the media um, in a way that no other right. Republican has done. For a lot of phony done, stories ever. that have, had to have been retracted and people who've been suspended, some have been fired. So, Joe, um, just sticking with that, you know, remark, mm -hmm. <laughs> it strikes me he gives the media, the mainstream media, more credit than they deserve, that they can somehow influence the election. They fought real hard to defeat Donald Trump uh, last November. Didn't work. It didn't work. The, the Hill did this great compilation of major newspapers around the country. And we came up with 59. And we looked at the endorsements that those 59 papers gave out. Yeah. 57 endorsements went to Hillary Clinton. Two went to Donald Trump. You know what that got her? It got her a concession speech. So the influence of the media that he's giving here, it isn't remotely what it used to be because half the country simply does not trust it in any capacity and actually loathe so an endorsement well. is really, you know, kryptonite. I mean, it's, it's just, <laughs> it, could it, be. it ain't good for you uh, if you're Donald Trump Superman, right? I think people know how to make up their own minds and do their own research. and They don't like being told how to think and what to do, particularly right. in Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Florida, North Carolina. Well, with, well let's face it, those six states decide elections now. And Everything think, else just is a wash. I think Joe makes a, a really great point, and I think that, there already was a lot of distrust for the media. And I think Donald Trump sort of has a great pulse on where people are at. He knows people hate Rosie O'Donnell, so he picks on her. He right. knows people hate the media, and so he, he drives us further. But the, the problem is that the media's sort of uh, hate for him is so huge and so overblown um, that they've actually done themselves in, in that they've made some really huge mistakes this year yeah. that just sort of solidify what he, the point this, he's trying to make. Go ahead. He, yes. he, he's exactly right in terms of ratings, that if Hillary Clinton won, homogenized candidate, homogenized presidency, risk adverse, right. ratings at MSNBC, which has surged this year, not, right. not beating Fox, but has surged, they would sure. be in the toilet. CNN would be, would be, they're not doing well anyway. Right, they're in a, they're in a distant sure. third place, and they actually lost viewers in 2017, which is a very difficult thing to do because this was the most chaotic, unpredictable year you'll ever see in terms of watching news. And the fact that they lost viewers is a is a big problem. But overall, yes, he has been a ratings boom for almost everybody, well, I, and the New York Times and the Washington Post. I just think he loves tweaking the media. Oh yeah, um, and, and they are so vulnerable and fallible. Yeah, and he he loves to underscore that by going over their heads with these tweets in yesterday, the New York Times interview. And he seems to enjoy the power he has to go, as you said, right over their head and direct. I mean, the New York Times, they like to set the narrative for the day and they have lost that power. Right. If he tweets something, um, it suddenly changes the story. And every, I mean, you see it even here in our own network, you know, you can't even, I, I feel bad for the producers. They can't plan for the next day because we just don't know what's going <laughs> to yeah, happen. We next. just react. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, so the political arm of uh, the, the old Trump campaign is suggesting what we really need is a fake news trophy to be awarded. So at the end of the year, Joe, who do you give the phony news fake news award to? Last night I had a guest on. He said it easily goes to CNN. CNN made major mistakes this year. Uh, they fired three reporters, one that was nominated for a Pulitzer. Uh, this was back uh, with the Anthony Scaramucci right. story. Fired three reporters, one that was nominated for a Pulitzer. Uh, this was back uh, with the Anthony Scaramucci right. story. Certainly. Uh, you could also go through, what you know what, there are so ABC. many. See, I give it to ABC yeah. because, because of Brian Ross. Ross. Yeah. Right? 
Right. The guy always gets it wrong. He always gets it wrong, and they rushed that story. Again, part of the whole Trump derangement syndrome. They rushed it knowing that this was a reporter who's gotten things, really important things wrong before. Right. And they all tend to be things that make conservatives look bad. You know, I picked up the phone when Brian Ross came out with his story immediately, and I called a couple of producers and said, whatever you do, don't go with Brian Ross' story. And they said, why? I said, because he always gets it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, what happened with Brian Ross and what happened with CNN, those two examples I just gave, because that happened in the span of four days, right, just, just a couple weeks right. ago. Those stories were based on unnamed sources. Who are unnamed sources? Are they innocent whistleblowers speaking truth to power? No, they're political operatives that are looking to send out a false narrative that they know that our media, who are like seagulls, will gobble it up and not even <laughs> check to see what they're eating. It, so unnamed sources always negative towards the Trump administration. Sure. And in Ross's case, it was one unnamed source. But remember with, with Ross, too, it wasn't just it was this is kind of inside baseball with Ross. What was interesting was that ABC, you know, uh, uh, Joy Behar came out and was sort of celebrating the news mm. about and that's where oh, the yeah. main, you know, audience in America got that information. And she had to come back and eat crow the next day, too. Yeah, but she's not media. She's no, she's not. But but football. right. But there's a lot of Americans that get their news. Right. Like it it's or not. True. You know what from it is from, from Colbert and, and from, from Colbert. Yeah. The the liberal media's unabashed scorn and visceral hatred for Trump is what gets them in trouble yeah. because they're so quick to find fault with him that they invariably are going to be getting it wrong. Joe Concha, Rachel Loya, Campos Stuffy, good to see you both. Thanks. Good to see you. Joe, Joe was out of breath. He was rushing over <laughs> here because he didn't anticipate the crowds and we gave him the wrong time. <laughs> but besides that. Other than he that, it. and he's got a great story to tell, which he'll tell us privately. I got here with 30 right. seconds he'll remaining through a side door and the yeah. producer said, we only got 30 seconds. I said, that's an eternity in this business. Yes, plenty of <laughs> time. Stay composed. Everybody's oh, happy. Um, hey, guys, happy New Year. Happy, happy New, New Year. Year. Be sure to vote in tonight's poll. Do you believe the 2018 will be an even bigger disaster for the Dems than 2017 as President Trump can? disaster for the Dems than 2017 as President Trump continues. We're on the last day of the trading day of the year, the Dow falling 118 points, S&P down 14, NASDAQ down 47, volume of the big board picking up to about 2.4 billion shares. Despite today's losses, markets posting the best year since 2013, the Dow up a whopping 25%, S&P up 19%, NASDAQ with gains of 28% on the year. Crude oil, by the way, settling at the highest level since June of 2015, closing above 60 bucks a barrel for the only time in 2017. And a reminder, listen to Lou's reports three times a day, coast to coast on the Salem Radio Network. Coming up next, President Trump giving some rare praise to Obama Attorney General Eric Holder. Sort of a backhanded praise. What sparked all of that? We'll tell you after the break. Stick around. President Trump expressing admiration for former Obama Attorney General Eric Holder in a new interview with the New York Times. He told the paper he appreciated Holder's loyalty to President Obama through scandals like Fast and Furious, saying, quote, when you look at the things that they did, Holder protected the president, and I have great respect for that, I'll be honest. like Fast and Furious saying, quote, when you look at the things that they did, Holder protected the president, and I have great respect for that, I'll be honest. He asked to Ambassador John Bolton, Fred Flights joins us. He is a senior vice president at the Center for Security Policy. Fred, great to see you as always. Um, hey, Greg, happy new year. You know, if you look at the, the rules and regulations on recusal, um, at the Department of Justice, it wasn't mandatory, it wasn't required for Jeff Sessions to recuse himself, uh, and yet he did, to the president's everlasting regret and sometimes anger, uh, and he's expressing it yet again, isn't he? Well, it's pretty clear the president is very bitter about the decision by Sessions to uh, recuse himself, which kicked off this investigation. But you know what's interesting about some of the president's most outrageous comments? They turn out to be true. I mean, it is absolutely true that Holder 
and Loretta Lynch stuck up for the president and did everything possible to block any meaningful investigations of the Obama administration. You know, um, I, I wonder to what extent the Mueller investigation is imperiling American-Russian relations. I wrote a column about it, in fact, and let me just put it up on the screen. The longer the special <coughs> counsel's case drags on, the less likely it will be that President Trump and Vladimir Putin can sit down together in earnest to discuss diffusing increasingly dangerous counters in Syria and a myriad of other contentious issues which imperil American-Russian relations. There is legitimate concern. U.S.-Russian improvement in relations as incriminating evidence of Trump-Russian collusion, which, however, mistakenly is a subject of Mueller's investigation. Um, former President uh, Mikhail Gorbachev uh, is especially aggrieved about this. He says it is dangerous that these two have not had a summit. What's your take? I think it's ridiculous. The Obama administration's relationship with Russia was absolutely horrible. It's hard to see how it could get worse. The president is right. We have to have a productive working relationship with Russia. And this idea that President Trump will, would be afraid to pursue such a relationship because the media will be hard on him and will criticize him, well, that's already happening. Yeah, but, but there, trust me, there is a feeling within the White House that, that will, that's what will happen if he decides to have a summit with Putin. That the media will be all over them. See, they're pals, collusion. Well, I, I don't know who in the White House thinks that. I don't think the president thinks that. Really? Um, I, I don't doubt that there are some people in the National Security Council, a lot of people in the National Security Council, the president shy. It doesn't mean overlook Russia's human rights violations and invasion of Ukraine, but it has the largest nuclear arsenal on Earth. We obviously need a productive relationship. I think the president knows he has to have a productive relationship with Russia. That doesn't mean overlook Russia's human rights violations and invasion of Ukraine. Right. No, I, I think that our relationship with, with, uh, well, with the Soviet Union was much worse. But the relationship is different here because during the Obama administration, the, the Russians walked all over the United States because Mr. Obama was so weak. I think they'd probably rather have Hillary Clinton or Barack Obama in the White House because they could walk all over the United States. They don't like a strong president. They don't like a Republican president who will basically oppose all the things that the Russians would like to do worldwide. But I think the Russians respect President Trump. Including providing arms in Ukraine. all the things that the Russians would like to do worldwide, but I think the Russians respect President Trump. Including providing arms in Ukraine. Which... Nonsense. Oh, and I'm, totally hoping we'll, I'm hoping we're going to learn that soon from Mueller. Yeah. Well, as I've written before, collusion, except in antitrust, is not a crime. Fred Flights, thanks very much. We're coming right back with much more. Stay with us. President Trump guarantees his historic tax bill will produce an abundance of jobs for the middle class and businesses. I consider this very much a bill for the middle class and a bill for jobs. And jobs are produced through companies and corporations. And you see that happening. Corporations are literally going wild over this. But Rhino Senator Rubio says the bill went too far to help corporations. We'll discuss Will Marco's remarks with Tammy Bruce and Dom Giordano next. And these base jumpers take free falling to new and spectacular extremes, unlike anything you've seen before. Strap in, the video is coming up next. Stay with us. Welcome back, I'm Greg Giardin for Lou Dobbs. President Trump welcomed more than 60 members of the Coast Guard to his West Palm Beach Golf Club today. That group got some face time with the commander-in-chief and then got a chance to hit the links at the prestigious club. Now the president thanking them for their life-saving efforts during the hurricanes in both Texas and Florida. Joining me now to talk a bit more about uh, why the media went apoplectic of the president's interview with the New York Times radio talk show host Dom Giordano joins us. 
and Washington Times columnist, Fox a business contributor, Tammy Bruce. Good to see you both. Hi there. So, Thank you. Um, Thanks very much. So, Dom, uh, the media just went nutsoid over that whole, and, and I don't get it because, you know, I, I read every bit of it that I could, and I, I thought it was rather interesting and well said. Yeah, and uh, honest, and uh, how many Republican presidents? You know, I, I read every bit of it that I could, and I, I thought it was rather interesting and well said. Yeah, and uh, honest, and uh, how many Republican presidents can the media, why they need to reelect them in 2020? I can speak from talk radio perspective, and it's, it's hard sometimes when we have a Republican president, you feel like you're on the defensive. With President Trump, there are so many angles, so many things that are going on, so many things, some of them that are unprecedented, that it is tremendous for talk radio and the rest of the media, for Fox and everybody else. There's plenty to go around. Now, Tammy, uh, you and I were talking before the show, and you think he, you know, the president was just engaging in his usual trolling. Yeah, yeah. Of the media. Well, he understands it with him saying, you know, they need me. They'll gonna, they're going to help me get reelected. Is that there has been a war between him, obviously, in the media for a year and a half. And we know who's won that mm -hmm. war. And that's the president. Uh, his uh, approval rating on Thursday was as high as Barack Obama's was at, a, at the same time uh, in Barack Obama's first, uh, first year. Uh, and that is after f only 5% of positive media versus a love fest for Barack Obama. Uh, mm -hmm. the, Uh, and that is after f only 5% of positive media versus a love fest for Barack Obama. Uh, mm -hmm. The uh, media's approval rating, though, at the same time, is still at the rate of cockroaches, or I think a little bit below cockroaches. So, <laughs> so we know, we know wh who's won this war, and I think the president can revel in that. Him talking to the New York Times puts a point on the end of that sentence, and that's why they went nuts. It will be fair. But then he went on to emphasize how many times do I have to say it? Uh, you know, I didn't collude with the Russians. Um, what's your reaction to that? Well, I think this is a classic uh, Trump. He throws out all sorts of lines of attack or praise and conflicting things. And uh, you just covered the backdoor shot at Jeff Sessions at the same time to pin him down. So I think what he's doing here is he is trying to appear to be fair himself and get praise to Eric Holder even yeah. in this. So it's multi-dimensional and he keeps these things in flux and it's very hard to pin him down. So I think what he's doing here is he is trying to appear to be fair himself and get praise to Eric Holder even yeah. in this. So it, there's something for everybody there again and it's very hard to hold him to one He's outside the box on most of this stuff, and it's very hard to pin him down. Right. You know, uh, I give the president credit because if Robert Mueller came to me interviewing for a job in my administration. Right. On a learning curve this, this year. And the rules within politics are so very different than in business. In business, you've got to have some level of trust because everyone does have the same interest effectively about, about what a project will be or the end result of a project. He's finding out that in politics, you, there really is no genuine trust. Um, the people around you are very important uh, and that you re you have to weave into your presumption that someone that you're dealing with is only thinking of themselves, not the larger. Miller clearly. Um, the people around you are very important uh, and that you re you have to weave into your presumption that someone that you're dealing with is only thinking of themselves not the larger Miller clearly more of people like that in Washington and he's trying I think to find them and yeah. to weave them out Miller clearly is a kind of individual who is not the the kind of person that we are which is we think think of the country first uh, and we're not out for ourselves first and with all of the bad guys in the FBI uh, that that uh, upper echelon the Clintons yeah. uh, everyone else uh, he's just say at the time all right absolutely, absolutely. yes very diplomatic Right. Um, thanks very much, Dom, Tammy. Great to see you both. Happy New Year, guys. Happy New Year. Be sure to vote in tonight's poll. Do you believe that 2018 will be an even bigger disaster for the Dems than 2017 as President Trump continues to deliver on his promises to the American people? A 3,300 foot cliff in Norway.
before they put on a breathtaking mid-air spectacle. They work together to perform an array of flips and turns and other tricks. And don't they make it look oh so easy? A little too close to the cliff and rocks for my taste. Coming up next, President Trump and Republicans looking ahead to the next legislative battle after a victory on tax cuts. But one rhino now having second thoughts. We'll take that up with Steve Forbes next. Rhino Senator Marco Rubio is trying to have it both ways on the Trump tax cuts. First, well, Marco grandstanded for child tax credits before ultimately voting for the bill. And now the failed presidential candidate says the plan goes too far to help corporations. He's even parroting the Democratic line that companies will simply pocket their tax savings, even though more than two dozen major companies have already given back money to their employees in the form of of bonuses or raises. Joining me now to talk about it, Forbes Media Chairman, Editor-in-Chief Steve Forbes. Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 B. Oh, you need investment. We've had low capital business investment in the last 10 years, which is why this economy until recently has been stagnant. So you want that investment to get a higher standard of living. And someone should also remind them that 80 percent of households will get a tax cut with this tax bill starting next February. And uh, his child tax credits almost a form of welfare because even if you don't pay income tax, you want a vigorous economy where people's pay are, is going up and you have better job opportunities. Marco needs to go back to the um, to the <laughs> shelf and pull out his Econ 101 book from college and reread it. I think he might actually learn. or listen to some Ronald Reagan tapes. Yes, that that'll do it. Um one book from college and reread it. I think he might actually learn. Or listen to some Ronald Reagan tapes. Yes, that that'll do it. Um, look. Look. The nice thing about capital gains, you get a twofer. One, you get immediate hundreds of billions of dollars of extra revenue for the government. Right. And two, you get more investment, which again is how you get a higher standard of living. And another thing, get rid of the alternative minimum tax, which is a burden. This yes. angers me so much because I regard it as triple taxation. You're taxed when you earn income. You're taxed when you invest at capital gains. And then you're die of people who are trying, trying to uh, succeed. How about the death tax? See, this and the is death what, tax. This yes. angers me so much because I regard it as triple taxation. You're taxed when you earn income. You're taxed when you invest at capital gains. And then you're die, you're, you die laying in the coffin. And the government comes in and, and they want to pick your pocket. It's really astan astonishing. And this is where I hope uh, the president, in, come in the new year, will make the point that this tax bill is just the beginning. It's really astan astonishing. And this is where I hope uh, the president, in, come in the new year, will make the point that this tax bill is just the beginning. To a great many people until you consider economic growth. Well, uh, every time we've done it in a major way, uh, you've gotten a stronger economy, stronger revenues. Now, investing, with capital gains, you get immediate benefits. Right. Investing, it takes two or three years for an investment to pay off. But if you're looking at any a five or ten year period, it is incontrovertible. You have a stronger economy, you have more revenue, and uh, the problem is the politicians get the money, they spend it, and then spend some more. How high can the economic growth get? Oh, we, given the sluggishness of the last 10 years, you could have several years of 4, 5, or 6%. Really? Wow. Yes. When was the last time we had 6%? Uh, 1980s under Ronald Reagan. Okay, that was in my lifetime. Barely. Um, Big what, tax cutter. What about infrastructure spending? Because uh, Democrats have long argued for it. Um, Republicans have often resisted it. Uh, but the president likes the idea. Well, the key thing on infrastructure, yes, everyone says they're for it, but you've got to remove the barriers to getting effective infrastructure. Yes, everyone says they're for it, but you've got to remove the barriers to getting effective spending done in New York as Paris. And the Times examined all the excuses, the the subway authority makes for uh, their bloated spending right. and found that the, almost all of them are false. Yeah, every time I go, I have like five guys. And, and uh, again, the permission process, 
hugely... Uh, it takes forever. It takes forever. Yeah. So why not uh, make it a condition before you get any federal or congressional money that you have or congressional money that you have to happy new year to happy you. new year Thanks to you for dropping hopefully it'll be a happy tax cut new year okay i'm, I'm looking for that five and six percent economic growth okay <laughs> i'm gonna watch the gdp uh coming up next china caught thumbing its nose at international sanctions against north korea how should president trump respond we're going to be taking up with asian expert gordon chang he's with us straight ahead stick around In our online poll last night, we asked you, do you have any confidence in Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein to purge the Clinton colluders and deep state never Trumpers from the FBI and the DOJ? And guess what? 95% of you said no. And you're absolutely right. Joining me now, author and expert on Asia, Gordon Chang. Gordon, great to see you as always. Um, will China help? The United so, for instance, components, equipment, material for their nuclear weapons program, those come from Chinese entities. China has supplied crucial equipment for North Korea's ballistic missile program and probably the technology for North Korea's most advanced missiles, more advanced than the ones that they fired in July, their ICBMs. Right. So, you know, essentially, China's been weaponizing Pyongyang, and this is just a story that continues on, and we deceive ourselves over it. The only way to get China on board is to make China at a point where they have no choice but to comply. In and other words, putting maximum pressure on the Chinese. All right. What is maximum pressure? Um, first of all, taking Bank of China, one of their big four banks, and declaring it to be a primary money laundering concern under Section 311 of the Patriot it, Act. It is, of course. It, it's been a money launder. In a 2016 UN report named Bank of China for devising and operating right. a money laundering scheme in Singapore. I'm sure. Sure. Death sentence. Banks that have probably been involved in this same activity. We need to take those banks down, give them a death sentence. Then Beijing is going to pay attention. Yeah, it would hurt us, but. Death sentence. Banks that have probably been involved in this same activity. We need to take those banks down, give them a death sentence. Then Beijing is going to pay attention. Yeah, it would hurt us. But at Chinese banks, they'd cut off the oil. I mean, there would be no more of this oil smuggling that we've learned about in the last three or four days. Right. Also, they just cut off trade. But the most important thing is that they would signal to the leadership in Pyongyang that Beijing was no longer backing their nuclear weapons program. And the people around, you know, maybe they can't convince Kim Jong-un, the ruler there, to change his mind. But he certainly they can convince the people around Kim, those people who form the heart and soul right. of the regime, they're the ones who can back away from Kim. China can affect them. Well, what do you mean back away from Kim? He's the strong man. He's the ruthless murderer. Um, are you a, a coup, you mean? Well, it doesn't necessarily have to be a coup, but it could be that. Um, you know, with Kim Jong-un killing about 160 senior regime figures since right. he took over in December 2011, yeah, he's intimidated those around him, but he's also loosened the bounds of loyalty between the regime figures and the Kim family. And I think his rule is a bit more precarious than most people think. Really? So, for instance, if you had the generals and admirals understanding that China was going to cut them off, they probably would come to some accommodation with Beijing. Beijing, over the course of decades, has bought off North Korean generals. And the Kim family, you know, Kim Jong-un, Kim Jong-il, his father, even Kim Il-sung before him, have gone off, have gone after the Chinese bought jet flag officers. Uh, you know, it's been this continual struggle between Beijing and the Kim family for the loyalty of the North Korean military. China can win that struggle. 